Hello everybody. Today we're going to finish up the fluorescent copper complex project by making it. But first I'm going to need to make some copper iodide because it's not very available but it's pretty easy to make using some potassium iodide, 7 grams, 10 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, and 4 grams of sodium sulfite, not sulfate. So, and as well, some dilute sulfuric acid, which I prepared by just adding a little bit to about I don't know, 40 milliliters of water, and that's that should be good enough. It doesn't have to be exact. So, uh, to start out, what we're going to do is dissolve 4 grams, which is what we have here, of the sodium sulfite in about 40 milliliters of water. So, I'm going to zoom on out again. Let me move the camera up a little bit and move this stuff out of the way. So, I'm going to get a 100 mil beaker and I'm going to add 40 milliliters of water. And in this preparation, exact quantities aren't very necessary. So, you know, just eyeball it. Yeah, you know, like I went a little over, but it really doesn't matter. Alright, so I'm going to add my sodium sulfite. Give it a nice swirl. And then um, after it dissolves, we're going to add 20 milliliters of our dilute sulfuric acid. Now it's supposed to be around 15%, but again, it doesn't have to be exact. So I'm going to do a cut and come back when our sodium sulfite is dissolved. All right, our sodium sulfite is now in solution. Camera focus, there we go. So now we're going to add 20 milliliters of our dilute approximately 15% sulfuric acid. There we go. Swirl it around a little bit. All right, so now what we're going to do is prepare a separate solution of the copper sulfate. So we're going to put our 10 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate and we're going to dissolve that in an arbitrary amount of water just enough so it all dissolves. So I'm going to add some water, I'm going to stir it up wait for it to dissolve and I'll be back for our next step. Alright, we have our dissolved copper sulfate and we're supposed to add the copper sulfate to the sodium sulfite but um, as you can see there's not very much room left in this beaker so I'm gonna add as much as I can and then I'm just gonna dump that back into the this larger beaker because uh, my choice of beakers was not ideal, so I'm just going to go ahead and add as much as we can, and then I'll just pour that in here. Okay, there we go. Nice light blue. And our next step is to dissolve our 7 grams of potassium iodide in 20 milliliters of water. And I have this little baby 50 milliliter beaker here. And I'm going to pour it into. Well, uh, I'm going to add a little baby stir bar and then we will proceed after this is dissolved. Alright, here we go. 
this is our solution of potassium iodide. And the next step is to, well, first take out the stir bar. And then uh, we're going to add this solution to our sodium sulfite copper sulfate solution. And this is where we're actually making the potassium iodide, or the copper iodide, sorry. So let's add this. Should see a white precipitate. So let me zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Let's add this. Oh yeah. So it's it's a little pink because the sulfuric acid I used has a little bit of dye. It's drain cleaner acid, but it shouldn't affect anything. So there we go. It's a murky, murky brown, pinkish suspension. And I'm gonna stir that with a stir rod. And I'm gonna let that settle out. And then we can do a quick gravity filtration and then we can move on to actually making our fluorescent copper complex, which will be very exciting. All right, so I'm finished filtering. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move our copper iodide to this pad of paper towels for it to dry. But I will not let it dry completely because it likes to oxidize in air. And I, I kind of want this to be as pure as possible. So um, it's recommended that it's stored underwater. So I might do that as well. But let me grab our filter. And it's a, it was very full. I kind of pushed the limits of that size. Open it. Oh, it ripped. That's unfortunate. Okay. There we go. There it is. A nice pale brown solid. It's actually white, like the pure compound is white, but there's some impurities from the sulfuric acid and other sources. So, But this will work just fine for making the complex. So I'm going to let this sit out and just reach dampness instead of completely soaked. And uh, when we're finished, or when it's finished drying, I'm going to uh, prepare what we need for the complex. And then we're finally going to make our fluorescent copper complex. Alright, so I went ahead and uh, dried the, well not dried, but kind of like got rid of most of the water on the copper iodide. And then I rinsed it and poured it into this bottle. And it's sitting underneath a layer of water. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so what I'm going to do to weigh out the amount that I need is that I'm going to have my scale and I'm going to, I'm going to put this whole mess. It's a paper towel with a cut piece of filter paper on top and I'm going to pipette out the suspension of copper iodide onto the filter paper and it should, um, it should absorb all the water out. The paper towel should suck all the water out, uh, at least most of it. And uh, I'm gonna weigh out five grams. So I'm gonna tear my scale for this filter paper. There we go. And then I'll, I'll start pipetting out our copper iodide. See, it kind of looks like chocolate milk. It's a nice suspension. And put it on here. All right, this is uh, about five grams. Uh, counting water, doesn't matter, uh, dampness. So now what we're going to need is some more of the potassium iodide and we're going to need seven and a half grams of the potassium iodide. So I'm gonna make another weighing boat and I'll be back when I have my weighed potassium iodide. 
All right, so I have my seven and a half grams of potassium iodide, and I also decided to measure out the other reagents we need, which is five milliliters of pyridine and 20 milliliters of acetone. And uh, right now I'm just scraping this copper iodide into this beaker, and we're gonna have to add 25 milliliters of water anyway. So I'm just gonna rinse the filter paper and everything off with my wash bottle to make sure we have good, um, a good amount in here. And that looks, looks about 20 milliliters. Let's rinse some more. And there we go, that's about 25 milliliters. Let me get this dirty filter paper out of the way. Okay, so now we have another suspension of copper iodide. Five grams of copper iodide in 25 milliliters of water. And what we're going to do is add our potassium iodide to this as well. There's our seven and a half grams. I'm going to swirl this around so everything's suspended. And now we're going to add our pyridine and acetone, which we will mix in a separate beaker. So I'll pour in our five milliliters of pyridine. And with it, is our 20 milliliters of acetone. All right. So, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move the setup to the hot plate because we need stirring for this next step. So I'm gonna put our suspension up there, and I'm gonna add a small stir bar. And we're gonna get this stirring very slowly. It's a nice moderate stir. And then, let me move the camera a little bit and zoom in. We're going to add our pyridine acetone mixture right here we should see a white precipitate and we definitely got something it is turning lighter so it looks like that's looks like we got something good out of that now, I'm going to leave this stirring for about five minutes, and then we'll go on to our washing steps. Alright, so we have our suspension of what should be our copper complex, and you can see it's already turning a little bit of yellow because of the sunlight coming in through the garage. Maybe if I cover it, it'll... Yeah, well, anyway, um, I'm fairly sure that this is extremely insoluble in water, so I'm going to do a couple water washings in the beaker, and I'm just going to do that by squirting some, some water in. I'm just going to rinse the sides, and then we're going to let that settle. We'll decant off the top, and then we'll rinse probably about two more times until we have our final product, at which point we'll just filter it off. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be back when we have our dry complex. Alright, here we are with our final product. And I have my UV flashlight here. I have, my, I have the product in uh, my chemical cabinet with the doors just cracked a little bit open so the camera can see so we get a nice display of the fluorescence. If there is any, hopefully. So um, I'm going to turn on my UV flashlight and uh, you can see a little bit 
on the hydrogen peroxide bottle in the corner. So I'm going to shine it on the compound and hopefully we get a nice fluorescence. Oh yeah, look at that. That's amazing. Look at that yellow. Wow. That's that's more than I thought. The camera can't really capture it well to me. Can I adjust? Well, it's a very very nice yellow color. It flore definitely fluoresces. That's nice. So here's it without the fluorescence. And here is with. You can see it's a real nice yellow. And as you cool it down to liquid nitrogen temperatures, it fluoresces blue. So it's got that thermochromic fluorescence. But I do not have liquid nitrogen available. So the next best thing is uh, I'm going to try to put it in the freezer and see if the color changes at all. But I'm very happy with this result. Real nice yellow color there. There it is once again without the UV, and there's that beautiful yellow. Just for reference, this is what it looks like during the daylight out in the open, and it's been drying for like an hour now. And uh, this is what it looks like with the UV on it in the daylight. You can see it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant, bright yellow. Nice yellow complex. Very cool. I'm going to put it in the freezer once it's dry. Alright, so I just took our compound out of the freezer and opened it up. I put it in this little container. It's about negative 5 Celsius right now. And uh, we're going to shine the UV on it. Really, it just it looks the same, honestly. Yeah, you're definitely going to have to get it a lot colder than just negative 5 Celsius. But uh, this is what the final powder looks like in the container. If the camera would decide to focus. Oh, let me press the button. So this is the final product. You see it's a pale yellow powder. And it's obviously a lot more yellow with the UV. And I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty interesting, that's a pretty interesting compound there. So I'm gonna add this to my collection. Well, I guess it's the start of my collection. I don't really have anything else like it, but it's a very, very nice compound. So with that, uh, the video is over. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.